so in the last sessions up till now we have studied about communities and how different communities work together and the organisms that are within a community how they interact what are the different kind of interactions that happen how do they behave how do they respond to an interaction and how they evolve together so all of that was a part of the community ecology understanding community ecology with a perspective of ecology behavior as well as evolution so now i'll talk about ecosystem on a larger scale that is ecosystem talks about you know multiple functions multiple communities that are interacting together now they are regulated by any specific climatic or ecological factor usually they are living in a certain sort of environment which is you know kind of restricted or kind of specific to that of the community or different communities let's say for an example if it is we are talking about ecosystem like river ecosystem or forest ecosystem so river ecosystem is regulated by certain amount of environmental structures or let's say conditions whereas forest environment or forest ecosystem is different from that of a river ecosystem in certain amount of environmental conditions right so they are usually bound by climatic as well as environmental conditions so when we talk about ecosystems we are talking about communities that are biotic part then there is energy that is the flow of energy between the communities within the community or might be outside the community and then there is environmental factors which regulate the entire movement of energy as well as movement of communities let's say it is interaction or if it is absorption if it is reaction or response whatever we are talking about the movement is directed by environmental factors now the exchange happens with respect to energy and the communities interact all together they form the ecosystem right so we are talking about communities that are interchanging and exchanging energies with respect to the environmental factors there are multiple communities which are bound by these rules to form a ecosystem right so moving forward when we talk about energy let's go back to the basic concepts of energy to understand that there are multiple aspects of energy right but the thing is the energy is regulated by few laws at uh, 10th or 12th we studied about laws of thermodynamics where laws of thermodynamics talks about ex heat exchange exchange of energy we know that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed and can only be transferred from one form to another so that is the first law of thermodynamics we have studied that we follow that and we know it clearly so as because the energy cannot be created nor be destroyed so the total energy in the universe is constant not zero but constant so it is a certain amount of energy that is prevailing so and that exchanges different different forms and in total there is a some sort of total universal energy now there are speculations a lot of people uh, physical sciences they talk about this dark energy which is stored at unknown energy but in a whole when we talk about a universal system we talk about a system that contains some amount of energy and there is exchange going on right and then comes second law which talks about entropy entropy is the disorderness or disorientation of a particular system that is the movement that happens within the system so it tells that within a system when there is not in equilibrium it is disoriented it is disordered and it is spontaneous right so the energy will move towards spontaneity until the equilibrium is reached okay um it's like understanding the one part of energetics where is talking about no something is moving rapidly until or unless it reaches a point of equilibrium it will be exerting heat okay it will be providing energy and it will be spontaneously providing energy that sort of interaction whenever something is disordered it is moving it is throwing out energy to come down to a particular place of equilibrium right so when something is motion it moves towards equilibrium releasing out energy and that reaction is spontaneous next is the third law which talks about super crystalline solid which is at absolute zero temperature has zero entropy that is the solid or the structure which has zero entropy at absolute zero temperature is called super crystalline solid so it is a theoretical system which is not essential the only essential things that we will be mentioning or talking about in ecology is the first and second law now the thing is when we talk about spontaneity and the reactions it is important to understand the gibbs free energy okay 
द ग्रिप्स फ्री एनर्जी और द अवेलेबल एनर्जी द ग्रिप्स फ्री एनर्जी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अवेलेबल एनर्जी टॉक्स अबाउट यू नो हाउ मच ऑफ एनर्जी इज अवेलेबल फॉर डिफरेंट सिस्टम्स ना द अवेलेबल एनर्जी डिपेंड्स ऑन हाउ मंट ऑफ टोटल एनर्जी इट हैज दैट इज द एंथेल्पी एंथेल्पी टॉक्स अबाउट यू नो टोटल एनर्जी ऑफ द सिस्टम एंड वट इज द डिजॉर्डरनेस और वट इज द मूवमेंट दैट इज हैपनिंग इन साइड द सिस्टम ओके so the movement or the disorderness or the disorder is affected by the temperature okay so more the temperature more the disorderness right so let's say in a in a solid system molecules are tightly packed right in a solid system molecules are tightly packed when they face temperature it expands it becomes liquid now the molecules are a little bit freer right so they are more free to move around so the disorder in this scenario has increased because of the rise of temperature the total energy as we know the energy can either be created not be destroyed but are uh, just transferred from one form to another they are being utilized in let's say uh, in heat energy and converted to chemical energy in sort so the total change in energy the total change in energy with respect to the increase in disorderedness and the temperature will result in providing the gibbs free energy okay all the available energy Now the thing is, this equation gives an idea about if the reaction will be spontaneous or not. When del G is less than zero, the system is spontaneous. Okay, which is you know, which is moving around. It is creating energy. It is releasing out energy. It is releasing energy. Okay, when the system is or the Gibbs free energy is more than zero, it is absorbing energy. What? Okay, so it requires energy. Now the thing is, when del zero is equals to zero, it is in equilibrium. There is like uh, minimal reaction. Okay, so that's the thing. And why? How? Uh, and how can it be used in ecology? So understanding the different forms of energy that are transformed from one to another, we need to understand, or we need to just get an idea that this sort of interaction happens in a internal level. Now the energy is absorbed. okay it depends on how much of movement there is in an ecosystem if the movement and disturbances are high then more energy will be you know radiated it will be distributed so let's say if i am uh, taking in 10 kg if i require this sort of amount of food if a tiger requires this sort of amount of food then if it is facing more disturbances more movement more disorderness then it will release out more energy similarly when things are equal amount of energy which is spent amount of energy which is acquired is kind of similar then that is an equilibrium state that is the best state to be at so yeah that sort of interaction all the interaction that happen can be you know uh, theorized out to this particular thing but just remember this idea and about spontaneous reactions you don't need to apply that in any manner but there are might be few questions on just this example or there were few questions around to just relate ecological disturbances with entropy okay nothing else